in the heart of Houston. It's fun. It's engaging. It's chatting with Chelsea. She's daytime's new bestie. Here's your host, Chelsea Edwards. Come back to me. Chelsea, I'm your daytime bestie, Chelsea Edwards. I want to start off by saying, hey, breasties. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we are recognizing it all month long. And today, we want to show our top halves some love. Let me tell you, this is going to be the most uplifting episode you have ever seen. We're going to get your girl sitting pretty in the right bra. And if you're interested in doing a little more, we're talking going under the knife, doing some augmentation. We have one of the top plastic surgeons in the nation here to talk about decreasing, increasing, or doing that reconstructive surgery for my breast cancer survivor gals. Oh, it's going to be a good show today. And you know, one of my goals with this show is really to embarrass the people who love me, especially my producer, Lisa. Uh, today's Chelsea chat is a confession. All right. So I stopped breastfeeding. Um, more than a year ago, but I will confess that I still like to wear my nursing bra. Okay, wait, wait, wait. All right, don't at me, all right? It's very comfortable. Um, it's, it's, you know, fitted to me after all this time. It's, it's been some years. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily find that color everywhere. And also, it was an investment piece. I spent a lot of money on that bra. So, yeah, I'm going to still wear it. Um, hold on a second. Now, Chelsea, oh, how old is this baby? He is three and a half. Jaleesa Brown with Uplifting Bras is here, you guys. <laughs> what is wrong with me wearing my... Look at this color, Jaleesa. It's gorgeous. It is. And it's then, great. also, I feel like if I'm ever in a tight spot and I need to access, like, my pepper spray or something uh -huh. real quick, you got this clip right here. Bam! Oh. And you can put anything in there. I don't think that's what it was made for, but I like the innovation. Yeah. You know, for protection. Oh, yeah. Protection, yeah. You know, you know we got to protect ourselves. It's a nurture, but protect, <laughs> too, you know? Right. Well, I know Oh, bras, hate to see you coming. Cause and you. Because <laughs> you like to put us in some new things. Absolutely. Do you get a lot of women who like to wear their nursing Absolutely. bras well past nursing? Absolutely. Yeah. You're not alone. Okay, that's You're still in danger, girl. Okay. But you're not alone. <laughs> All right. So okay. you're going to help me out today? I'm going to help you. I'm going to uplift you. Oh, I okay. need some uplifting. All right. I, I know yes. you do a lot of that. Yes. And then you have a specialty as well. Is it um big? Back, bro. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Absolutely. let's take a look at that. <laughs> Do you ever say things like, I need to unbig my back, but feel like you can't find the proper support? Contact the BBB. That's right, big back bras. When BBB says they have your back, they mean it. Size 32, 42, or 52. The BBB is the place to BBB. So if you like to eat, Feel like your bra is fighting for its life every day? Need something sweet after meals? Review menus weeks before going to a restaurant? Or constantly hear the whispers of big back, big back in your head? Don't wait. Call 1-800-BBBBBBB for big back bras to support you. support right <laughs> absolutely <laughs> okay Jaleesa you really do bring up some points in that video there so tell us what uplifting bras is all about okay so I started uplifting um, 11 years ago because I felt like I needed that support that I didn't have and I feel like you know Houston's a large city mm -hmm. and I struggled growing up just having bras that I liked that fit the way I liked and actually looked good and it wasn't until 2011 when I went to LA because you know that's where a lot of people had breast implants back in the day ah, now you can get them anywhere right yeah right here. <laughs> but at first it was more of a Hollywood thing mm -hmm. so when I went there I decided oh let me um, go bra shopping here because they should have something for me and they did it was, I was in bra heaven I was oh, like oh in LA yes I was okay. like these colors these fine laces oh my gosh options. this is for me yes options for the big options bus. and cute options because I was young, like, why yeah. do I want something that's ugly? Yeah, so you decided to bring that here to yeah. Houston. And what's your specialty? So I lift cups D and up. 
D and of. All right, yes. yeah, we are talking some big busts, yeah. okay? So <laughs> what are some of the challenges for the women who come and see you? Um, a lot of people go to retailers that don't really cater to them or maybe mm -hmm. just where there aren't exactly bra specialists. You right. know, you just have employees. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's not a dig or nothing. This just is what it is. Right. They're just trying to get that clearance price bra, yeah. but it may not be the right fit. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, when it comes to those selections, mm -hmm. um, what are some things, like you said, a lot of women haven't had a proper fitting. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what do you do? What do you measure? So you want to measure the underbust, which is right directly underneath your breast, mm -hmm. and then you measure around your breast in the back, but like nice and parallel, straight across at the peak of the breast. Ah, know. okay, Between all right. Peaks. And that's going to give us the cup? Yes. Somewhat. It's yes, some once, you, once you do the bra math, you know, bra all the calculations, <laughs> then you'll get your cup and your band size as well. One thing I always recommend, at least try to get fitted once a year because as women, our bodies are constantly changing. Yes. We have hormonal changes. People have babies, mm, facts. you know, yeah. breastfeeding, nursing, those are all factors, weight gain, weight loss, and just living. Yeah. 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 And sometimes your breasts are changing. They, they are their own little entities on our bodies. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That breastfeeding can make them go up, then make them go down. So a lot of changes yeah. there. Okay. We got to talk about how to make sure we are in the right bra with you. So coming up, uh, more uplifting bras and we'll see what, what to do Ooh, with this thing. Are we going to burn it? Are we going to burn it? Yeah. Okay. told you we were going to pick you up this episode and back with uplifting bras we've got Jaleesa Brown okay so when women come to you they get measured first you make yes. sure you got the right measurements and then what's the next step are they telling you about their lifestyle when it comes to figuring out which bra is right for them yes so some of them tell me ahead of time like hey this is what my lifestyle is this is what I'm looking for some where it's just like once we assess and get their size right they're like okay well I need I need a sports bra because I like to work out. I need a strapless bra because I have these cute dresses that I want to wear. Okay. And things like that. So I just try to, I even gauge what they come in with. Like, okay, this is a style of bra that they like. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'll, you know, introduce them to. Okay. So you could just pull up at somebody's house or I work pull uh, up, yes. workplace. Okay. Yes. All right. I've, I've been to both. Oh, nice. I've, I've been to church. I, I meet people where they're at, literally and figuratively. I love that you've been to a church to yes. revamp somebody's bra drawer. <laughs> we are uplifting the spirit. Yes, yes. <laughs> Inside and out, you know, I'm here for it all. Absolutely. And, I, you know, bras actually play a role in your breast health, yes, right? Yes, they do. Okay, talk about that uplifting. Okay, so one of the main things that people don't realize is that you do need to let the boobies breathe sometimes oh okay you know? all right i thought that was just how i felt sometimes but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like it's an innate feeling <laughs> okay, right yes. because it's right ah. so you know i i know i'm the bra lady breast lady whatever uh -huh. but hey sometimes we gotta let these boobies breathe let them breathe yes. okay so does that mean we don't sleep in our bras because i know that's a controversial topic it is so the thing is what i always advise people is that like give yourself some time. If you've been working all day, wearing your bra all day, mm -hmm. let your boobs breathe. You don't need to sleep in a bra. Okay. You know? If maybe you've just been lounging on the couch all day, then mm -hmm. okay, maybe you want to sleep in a bra or something, you know? Sometimes, cause you know, when your breasts are heavy enough and you're laying on your back, they can, they can go. Okay, so and it's harder. <laughs> they can go and what we say cook. They can make eggs in the kitchen while you're oh. in bed. Okay, <laughs> so especially if you're sleeping in a tank top. So you don't want to do that. But I mean, sometimes it's okay. okay. Sometimes, sometimes they like to cook eggs. Okay, okay. you let them do their thing, yeah. and that is okay. But Absolutely. otherwise, we can sleep in a bra. It's not gonna hurt us. No, it's not gonna hurt you. Okay. But it's. Like, of course, you shouldn't do anything in excess, but that's mm -hmm. not, that's something that you want to be mindful of every day of like, how much time did you spend in a bra today? Oh, and okay. if you need to sleep in a bra, because if you've been working all day 
and you had on a bra, you've been gone 20 hours or something like, yeah, okay. give them a let breath. Them a breath. Yeah, let them give them a breath. Yes, you don't <laughs> let them breast. All right. Yes. So let's talk about some of the different things that women are looking for. So okay. this is classic. So right this here. is actually a multi-way bra, so it can oh, nice. be strapless. Nice. So a lot of people need a good strapless bra. Absolutely. Like me, you know what I'm saying? We always mm -hmm. do look at you rocking it. <laughs> <laughs> what are yes. some signs that our bra is not right? It's not fitting properly. Okay. So one is if one of the mm, most common things is that you want your bra to fit parallel, like on your body. Mm. So from here to here. You want it parallel. Okay. So you don't want it rising up on your back. Like if this is your back, you don't oh, want it going all the towards way up your here. neck. Yeah. Okay, got you, got you. You I don't need it on your neck. Guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then so some women are just looking for like an everyday style. Is that yeah. what this is over here? So this one is more because, you know, you have a lot of people that are like, oh, they like something that's seamless. They'll typically say a T-shirt bra, which that's fine. Mm -hmm. So it's just something like this to where some of them worry about their nipples showing or oh i work here and i don't like or and some people just have like large nipples too then they just don't want them to show oh. but it's very common and even in the bra world it's kind of like an american thing they're like oh they like to hide the nipple and stuff so oh that's an american thing yeah in the bra world like that okay but good to know yeah Check they out. feel like they that we want to hide our nipples more um but <laughs> also I'm more myself. I like more of like I call them paper thin bras. Ah. So something like this that's just really thin. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you see a seam. Yeah. Don't really care if you see a nipple you either. You are kind of <laughs> letting them breathe with this. Okay. Yes. So if uh, it is, if it's riding up, does that mean that it's the wrong size, like too small or too big, or like what does that mean? So usually? basically, your breasts are weighing down the bra. Oh, okay. So gotcha. that lets you know that for sure your band size, the number is wrong. Mm -hmm. That it's going to be too big. So if you measure 32 and you're wearing a 40, like your breasts are going to go ahead and uh, <laughs> weigh that uh, down because, then, yeah, yeah, that's supposed to be a lot smaller. It's mm -hmm. supposed to fit, what parallel is, fit. What is the largest size you've serviced? Um, I go up to N cubs, but I also have O cubs as well. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good to know. Just want to put it out there. If anybody is N sitting and o. with the N's <laughs> and the O's, you know where to go. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I love this color, I will admit. Oh, so yes. you also have the ladies wanting to, uh, you know, like, yeah. Branch a out, have some treat color. Treat for themselves. Okay. You know. Again, from where I came from, yes. I didn't have these options. So it's very important to me to provide these types of options for women so they can have different colors, different styles, and different looks and in their sizes. So when it comes to getting our new bras, mm -hmm. are we starting with the strap as tight as it can go? How do, how do we know how tight it should be? So with they are specific to each person. When I do fit women, I adjust the straps just to make sure that like their breasts are in there correctly and that it's fitting right. But I also ask like, hey, how does this feel? Is this okay? So I adjust it to how they like it specifically. One thing I will say, you want your bras to fit on the loosest hook when you first get a bra. Oh, so okay. with this being the loosest hook. Okay, So Got it. a lot of people, they're so used to wearing bras that don't fit that mm -hmm. they just put it on and bring it all the way to the yeah, last Yeah, I, I will admit, I've always done it on the tightest, mm -mm. but it's supposed to fit on the loosest. Hook. When you first get a bra, it should fit on the loosest. So this way, your bra can have some longevity, and you can bring it in with time as it naturally stretches out. Oh. over the years okay years years plural. okay you should be able to have your bras if you take care of them properly okay unless they're a nursing bra gotcha <laughs> gotcha i have been put in my place today thank you so much Jaleesa, <laughs> from uplifting bras now I, I got a little favor to take uh, with me a little replacement right <laughs> okay guys we're talking to a board certified yes. <laughs> plastic surgeon after this about how to get your boobies right if you want to go under the knife We'll see you in a bit.
recognized as one of the top plastic surgeons in the nation. We are joined by Dr. Franklin Rose. You've been a board certified plastic surgeon for 40 years, even though you don't look like it. You say you haven't <laughs> had a You're really work. sweet, Chelsea. You are incredible. You're so sweet. Thank you for joining me for this titillating episode <laughs> of Chatting with Chelsea. Okay. <laughs> no pun intended. Yes, right? So we just finished talking about, you know, big boob problems. Uh, if women are interested in getting a reduction, what do they need to know about this? Well, the primary presentation for reduction might be collarbone, clavicle notching, large pendulous breast, kind of a, a posture like that. Mm. Uh, some of these patients present with just, we once did a story for a show, the largest breast reduction in Texas, I mean, triple N breasts. <gasps> so it really, it really can be almost quite debilitating, honestly. It's a very common operation, actually, okay. and it's a very sought after operation because it's painful, you know, the patients mm. can present with back and neck pain, and so it's uh, not just a, an operation of cosmesis or cosmetic surgery, but it, it's a reconstructive operation as well. Oh, triple in, I cannot imagine. Just, you know, really large breasts. Oh, is there a minimum size to be able to be eligible for a reduction? Well, typically, uh, you know, with every reduction, you get a lift. Some reductions might be as small as 150, 200 grams, and then this particular patient I was referencing was three kilograms per breast. That's seven pounds per breast. Whoa, that so is a that's, lot. That's really large. A yeah. lot of weight yeah. carrying around yeah. that all day. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes. what is the recovery like with the reduction? Well, surprisingly, I mean, it sounds like one of those operations, oh my gosh, I have to take two, three weeks off of work. No, you can do this on a Wednesday, Thursday, go back to work on a Monday. And the main thing is just no twisting, no turning, no arms up over the head for the first little interval of time. Healing is actually very quick. There's not a lot of sensory nerve endings in the breast tissue, so the breasts heal rather quickly. Okay, all right, well, good to know. I see you also brought some toys here. Yes. These are for the ladies who are interested in augmenting, adding yes. instead of reducing. Yes. yes, it's very interesting. This implant, or a, a cousin of this implant, this silicone gel implant was invented right here in Houston in the oh. 60s at Baylor College of Medicine by a professor of mine, Frank Giroux. And so this is now called the gummy bear gel implant, memory gel implant. It's different. The first implants were really, yeah, go on, Chelsea. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> okay. you can, you, you can, are you, I'm going to let you keep that. I mean, these are, it does these are feel samples. like a, cu a gummy it, bear. <laughs> yeah, it really feels beautiful. I mean, it was manufactured to be the same density, mm -hmm. the same quality. It's a very popular operation. Again, this is one I've done. 6,000 times, but the same density and quality as human breast tissue. Very, very safe, very, very safe, op very safe implants. So when a woman comes into your office, she might look at all these and say, hey, right. this is the one I want. Exactly. What we do is we, you know, you have to, really the thing that helps them out most is when patients bring a post-operative image of what they think is a pretty breast, and then you go through the kind of implant style, the implant shape, uh, but every patient is different. Some patients barely want an augmentation. I would say in our practice, 350, mm -hmm. this size, thereabouts, would be the most common size chosen. And this goes up about a cup size and a half. So if they really want to go up, like they're like, I want the bins, I want the but big it, boy. But it's uncommon. Okay, it's, it's uncommon. uncommon. Are there things that, I mean, do they have to prep? in a certain way or is their recovery longer? Well, mainly you just have to make sure there's a good breast envelope to to place such a big implant because if it's a very, many patients present very tight and tiny, like barely an A cup. They come in and they say, oh, can I have full C, small D? Well, you just can't do that. You oh, can't get to okay. that. You can't just jump up? Right, you have to have a certain breast envelope in order to accommodate a larger implant. But mm -hmm. as I say, it's uncommon. Uh, most patients want to just go to kind of a full C cup. And um, a big indication is postpartum involution. Patient, patients have one or two or three babies. Uh, maybe they started as a C uh, and they just, now they're a small B through breastfeeding and mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. So that's a very common indication. And of course, post this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, right? Yes. So yes. we use these implants for post mastectomy re uh, reconstruction. Okay, and yeah. And I wanted to ask you about that. Is, is, are there any recent innovation when it comes to reconstructive surgery for survivors. Well, there's some very big operations that one has to do in irradiated tissue, such as taking tummy tuck flaps without implants. But if it's just sort of a simple lumpectomy without a particularly uh, large dose of radiation, 
you can go directly to an implant or in some cases what's called a tissue expander which is an implant that's placed with a little port and you can put in saline and kind of pump up the tissue come back with a primary implant so that's a very popular uh, uh, technique for reconstruction post mastectomy okay so if a woman is has recovered and she's ready to you know get that chest back how it was what is the first step is it just you know talking to the doctor to know you know, what size we're doing, you know, how we need to prepare, all of that? Well, I think it's always important to choose a board-certified plastic surgeon. Uh, patients sometimes have friends who might have had procedures or their primary care doctor or their gynecologist. Those would all be good uh, reference sources for the patient to proceed. Then, of course, the patient comes into the office. We would examine the patient, uh, obtain medical photographs, uh, go through the whole procedure with them. Okay, yeah, because I love that you said find those recommendations because we've seen the shows where oh, wow. there are some mess ups and you've had to fix some things That's like right. that. That's right, yeah. Make sure that you get a board certified surgeon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anything else we need to know before we go under the knife? No, but I'm going to gift you one of these for your paperweight in your, in your My little salon. Yes, your little, yes, your thank you. <laughs> in my pillow, yeah, a pillow. <laughs> when I get sleepy. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. It's Rose. It's nice to be on air with you. It's yes. a very pleasant <laughs> thing. Very, very nice show. All right, you guys. We'll see you right after this break for our final takeaway. Joining me for another chat with Chelsea. I want to thank my guests, Dr. Rose and Uplifting Bras. They've got some upcoming events if you want to check them out. Don't forget to get a board certified surgeon if you do want to get these things done up a bit. And don't forget to let those boobies go. Let them free, okay? We'll see you on the next Chatting with Chelsea.